I knew this thing was going to sell really, really quickly. I put a really good price on it, and the market for this kind of stuff right now is pretty good. <music> Welcome back to Commonwealth Flipper. My name is Kevin and we are in the Commonwealth cabin. This is uh, early Monday morning for me. I usually ship out on Sunday evening, but I had so many I'm like, you know what? I'm going to divide it up because I don't have to go to school today. If you're new to the channel, I'm a high school history teacher and I'm back at school kind of, sort of. I had a lot of questions about this lately, so I figured I'd answer it. I am back at school teaching, but I'm teaching virtually. So the teachers are going in, but the students aren't right now, which is a whole new world for me. And I'm learning a lot of new things that take up a little bit of time, but I didn't have to go to school today. So I'm pretty happy about that because it means I can get in here, which is really where I love to be selling things and shipping things and making a little bit of money. And I sold one thing today. I knew this thing was going to sell really, really quickly. I put a really good price on it and the market for this kind of stuff right now is pretty good. And the reason I put a good price on it is because I thought a viewer would want this after watching it on the Commonwealth Picker channel just a couple of days ago. And that's exactly what happened. And I'm happy with who got it. And I'm going to show you in just a minute what it is and who bought it. But before we do that, let's take a look at what else sold. All right. First two I pulled out. I have them stashed up here. I have tons of these things. So Twisted Radio Waves. This is Jerry Garcia, Dr. Demento. It's a series of songs and interviews from I don't know what year the heck it was. Some Maybe some of y'all know out there, but uh, they'd have an interview and then they'd have a song and an interview and a song and an interview and a song. I bought these at the Goodwill. I bought 1,000 of them. The boxes were 500 a piece and they were trying to sell them for 99 cents a piece. And I went to the manager and I was like, hey, you know, I'll buy the whole box. I'll buy both boxes if you give me a price. And he said, how about five bucks for each box? <laughs> and I said, sold. So I got 1,000 of these. For 10 bucks and it has taken a long time to sell a bunch of them off a lot of times viewers will buy this i don't think this is a viewer but we have them i'm selling them by twos because they're just a little bit more likely to sell they're kind of tough sellers to be honest with you but they sell for eight dollars and 95 cents free shipping on these but you know the, the most we'll pay is about two dollars and 80 cents and i have a lot of people ask me you know why in the world are you selling this stuff that's not making you any money so there's a lot of reasons why I sell some of the things I sell. Some of them aren't good reasons. Some of them are uh, some issues I think that I have. But this one is not. This one's not going to fall under that category. This is definitely worth it. But it is a good question to ask yourself. Why are you spending your time selling this for X amount of dollars? Everybody's time is worth money. Mine just happens to be worth a little bit less than a lot of folks out there. But I want to show you something real quick. All right, here's your history teacher math lesson. So, Trist Twisted Radio Waves, which I already told you I paid $10 for a 1000 So, I'm into these two for two pennies. So, $8.95 is the selling price. Two eighty dollars is the most I'll pay in shipping. Uh, if it's under that first class shipping, I'll send it out first class. Maybe even if it's over. But two eighty dollars would be the most I would spend because it's definitely under a pound media mail. $6, that brings us to $6.15 in profit. Minus the two cents that I paid for them. $6.13. And I just roughly estimated $1.50 in fees and material, you know, whether that's printer ink or, well, I don't use ink, but you get the point. Or whether that's maybe a tape or packaging material, whatever it is. So $1.50 in fees and materials. That brings us to $4.63 profit, which might not seem like a whole bunch, but I had a thousand and we're selling them off two by two here. So that's 500 different sales at that price. And I totaled that out to be once they're all gone, once I'm probably, I don't know if they'll be gone first or I'll be gone first, but once they all sell, $2,315 profit. And I think I've sold about half of them at this point. So that's really, really, really good money for one listing. Even though you have to ship it a bunch of times, it's still really good money for one listing. The shipping part is easy. Throw them a little poly envelope, slap it shut, and put the sticker on it. All right, sold a baseball glove. Obviously, this is a left-hander's baseball glove, which I'm not left-handed. You wear a left... For you baseball people, you have to forgive everybody else out there. So I'm just going to say this to the rest of you, you baseball folks, softball folks, whatever. 
just ignore it for right now. So the lefties wear the glove on the right hand because they're obviously throwing with the left hand. Now, a lot of times when you pick up first baseman's gloves, they will be left-handed and outfielder's gloves will be left-handed. You're almost never gonna find a left-handed catcher's glove. You're almost never gonna find a left-handed infielder's glove, unless maybe it's like a pitcher that would wear it because there's really only three positions in baseball that lefties play. Yeah, there might be some exception at the youth level, but at the professional level, lefties play, left-handed throwers play first base, outfield, and pitcher, and that's it. And right-handers can play, of course, any position. But oftentimes, if you find a glove out there and you're trying to identify what type of glove it is and you can't figure it out by the numbers on it or whatever, if it's left-handed, well, obviously, if it looks like this, it's first baseman's glove. But if it's a smaller glove, it's probably not going to be left-handed because most, like I said, most infielders are right. All infielders are right-handed with the exception of first base gloves. So anyway, just something to look at when you're out there. A lot of times the bigger, bigger gloves, the 12, 14, inch, they're supposed to be 12, but there's some of them are a lot bigger than that. They are outfielders gloves and they'll fold differently. So I think it's a good thing to learn about gloves. They are decent sellers. Now this year with baseball kind of not being played in a lot of, a lot of places, it took a long time to sell this particular glove. And it's an older one. It's in great shape, but it is an older glove for sure and it ended up selling for $20 plus shipping. Sold an Xbox, a regular Xbox lot of Halo games, three of them for $15.95 plus shipping. Sold a pipe, this is a Falcon pipe made in England. And I decided to sell some of the pipes off individually. And I've sold one lot already for some pretty good money. I can't remember exactly how much it was. And this came from the exact change sale. And then I decided to sell each of these off independently because I thought they were worth enough money separately. And then I put the rest in a giant lot. And I think I just listed that uh, yesterday. And I can't remember what price I put on it. But anyway, this one sold for $18.95 plus shipping. If you find a whole box full of pipes, it's almost always worth it if the price is right. They sell pretty darn good. With that sale, it brings our $50 buy at that exact change sale. It brings the total so far to $590. So $540 profit after everything's paid so far. $2 Walmart purchase, one of many, many. These seem to be pretty good sellers. There's only one left. Size 2XL, which is a great size to sell. Liberty shirt. I paid two bucks. There it is right there. I got to take that off. <laughs> So for $18 free shipping, so it's a pretty nice little profit on that. Picked this thing up for $0.99 cents at Goodwill a long time ago. It's uh, it's United Way Services, some kind of charity thing. Of course, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It's been so long. It was probably not the best buy because of it being long tail, but I saw none out there. And when I see none out there, sometimes that means maybe I should be the only one selling it. It's just this little uh, replica guitar is all it is. And I think it's just a charity thing that they were selling at this event for the United Way. So anyway, it sold for $25 free shipping. So I'll make maybe five or $10 on this thing is all, but I'm finally glad it's gone because it's been in the store for about two years. Super Mario Galaxy game. This one, unfortunately, has a little bit of scratching on it. It does work. And it didn't have the little manual to go with it. So we took, I think, $16 for this one, which isn't too bad because I bought it in a lot of Wii stuff, but I paid $40 for. So we've already knocked out 10 of that $40. This was a Sam's Club buy. We ended up paying like $4.70 or something for a whole ton of these. And we are getting down to the bottom of the barrel on these. There's over $40 initially. This sold for $18 free shipping. So we'll make a little bit of money. And it's not a whole bunch of money, but there were literally of this size, this type shirt, there were just dozens and dozens. So it made it pretty easy to have one listing. Here's another game, I think from that same lot. And this one sold for $15, once again, with no manual. If you can find the ones with the manuals, they go for a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna take you in the back and show you the item that I was talking about that I listed for a really good price thinking that a viewer would buy it after they watched it on the Commonwealth Picker channel. And they certainly did. Let's go take a look at it. All right, here it is. Decided to hang it up right here. And it is this Redskins jacket, but it is a vintage Redskins jacket. It's a Logo 7. I love selling Logo 7 stuff. 
market goes up and down on it, but it's fairly good almost all the time. Size large in really good condition, actually. And I didn't see any comps out there for this particular one. There's some Logo 7 Redskin stuff that's selling, you know, 50 bucks or so. And maybe every once in a while a little bit more. But there are comps of other teams selling out there for pretty good prices. And this, of course, being the Redskins logo that everybody wants to grab right now before they can't grab it. Might make a difference a little bit. Here is the back and, of course, the embroidery. It's in really good condition for those Redskins fans out there. Little Logo 7. Like I said, love selling that old stuff. So here's the deal. This was bought by a viewer, and I had other viewers who watched that show saying, hey, are you going to sell that? Are you going to sell it? It was already sold. <laughs> Not long after that video aired, I think it was on Sunday, I had that thing sold, and I put a great price on it. I think I probably could have put $150 on that thing and eventually sold it. I put 100 bucks on it, and I was thinking, you know, I'd like a viewer to get this thing. Somebody who might want it, and that's exactly what happened. The cap guy bought it. So if you don't know the cap guy, here he is. It's all one word, the cap guy. <laughs> and he did a little feature on our show one time, and he's a really nice guy. And this is uh, Oklahoma. That's where this thing is headed. It's going to Oklahoma. And if you want it, you're going to have to talk to him now. And I think that that is a great investment. I think you watch the cap guy show. I bet you he will sell that thing for a little bit more than he bought it for, for sure. Because it is a nice one and there are no comps that I've seen out there for that particular one. So that could be a situation where he might be able to maybe even, if the market demands, maybe even double his money. So anyway, if you haven't gone and checked out the cap guy, go ahead and check. He's not the cap guy, by the way. <laughs> go check him out. All right, had another gift. Look, a bunch of folks have been sending us stuff, and that is amazing, but I try to do like one a day. So if you send us something, it'll be on here eventually, I promise you, and we'll give you a big thank you. So let's take a look at this one. All right, so here it is. New Jersey plate, the historic plate, which means it goes on those antique vehicles. So American Truck Historical Society, and I will put that up in the back. Whenever I get stickers or... Uh, business cards or something i tend to put them up i got to come up with a better system because with the heat and and the ac back here they don't want to stick too well i've just been taping them so we're gonna have to come up with a better system but we'll put it right there all right new jersey plate all right let's see here kevin just want to say thank you for the great information you give on your youtube channel i know you're a history teacher and closes a new jersey historical license plate historic license plate used on antique cars and trucks also encloses a sticker from the american truck historical society based out of kansas city missouri our mission is collecting and preserving old truck manufacturing information and trucking company information I sit on the board of directors and I'm always on the lookout for the old truck stuff. For years, my wife was a garage sale junkie, but after a fall this past winter, she is no longer mobile. But watching your channel as you go from sale to sale has brought so much joy into her life. For that alone, you deserve a big thank you. Wow, that is awesome. Amazing to hear. Thank you so much for sharing it. Hope you find a place for this plate in the Pickers Shed. So we definitely will. Here's his email, by the way. If you are uh, if you are in the possession of some trucking stuff, maybe you can uh, message him. And that is so amazing to hear. Thank you so much for the kindness and for the kind words. And matter of fact, we are going to do something. I talked to Reagan about this. And we have been waiting. And we're going to do it right here. She has number seven out. If you've been watching the show for a while, Reagan does these. And we put them up and sell them on CommonwealthPicker.com and take all the proceeds for these when she does them. Uh, the very first ones have sold. They sold for quite a bit of money. <laughs> if you have them, put them in the comments below. One of them went for 250 bucks. But we're going to put this one over here, number seven. We're going to put it over there on the Commonwealth Picker store. I haven't asked Reagan if we're going to do it for 20 or 25 But you know what we're going to do with this? If you would contact me. In honor of your wife, we're going to donate to your trucking society here. And uh, hopefully you can use that money for something in uh, preserving the old trucker stuff. So anyway, we love that stuff. And we are always looking for somebody who is kind to us. And we're going to be kind back. So if you would, send me a message. Send me an email at uh, commonwealthpicker.com. 
and tell me how we can get that money to you. Or I suppose I can email you as well. So we're going to put that over on commonwealthpicker.com. If you're interested in it, you probably better hurry because they go quick. All right, I think just two sales maybe on the eBay cave in there, and then we have a homeschool hustler store sale, and we'll come back in here. Hey, I forgot to read that the cap guy said that he was a Cowboys fan. <laughs> so he must really think that thing is going to go up in value if he's buying Redskins stuff. <laughs> so thank you so much. We do appreciate it. And I sold what's behind me right here. And if you've been around the show for a while, I've sold these before. I've sold, I don't know, I usually sell about 25 to 50 a year, depending on how many I can get from Walmart at their 75% off clearance. They're only $40 trees. And I end up selling them for $39 plus shipping. Danny May doesn't like it when I don't pick up an item. So I'm going to go pick that one up and show it to you, even though it's huge. All right, so there you go. I picked it up for you. <laughs> it's like that knitting machine from last week, right? So I sell them now. People ask me how I ship them. So I ship them a couple different ways. One, I'll put a message in there a lot of times. I don't know if I did with this particular tree, but usually I do. And the white ones sell pretty pretty good, actually sell better than the green ones. So I try to pick up more of the white ones and less of the green ones. But I usually will put a message in there and say, hey, I'm just going to ship this thing out just as it is, if that's okay with you, unless you need it a different way. Like if it's a gift for somebody, if you want me to put one of those heavy-duty contractor black bags around it and like wrap it like a Christmas gift would be wrapped, or if you need me to put it in a box, you need to tell me, that that's what you need me to do because I'm just going to ship it just like this. And I make sure there's extra tape everywhere. And so far, knock on wood, I haven't had a problem with it. So $39 plus shipping on this. I paid $10. So I'm going to make a pretty decent little profit. It's going to go FedEx and it's pretty easy now. I love FedEx going to Dollar General. So I've been going a lot to uh, when I'm not in school to the Dollar General down here and dropping it off. Items like that are always calculated shipping, always. It's just too risky for me. I don't do enough volume to let those even out over time. I know a lot of big sellers will do free shipping on stuff like that because they sell all over the place, and in the end, they end up making a pretty good profit. But I'm not big enough of a seller, nor do I intend to ever be, to be able to offer free shipping on something like that. All right, we have one going out to Brennan, one going out to Robert, and one going out to Andrew. And Andrew says, Hi, Kevin, just a note to say thank you for all you do. I hope you keep inspiring others as you have inspired me. Hope you and your family stay safe. Could you please sign it? Yes, Andrew, we will sign it. Matter of fact, I read this earlier. I already signed it. I already put it in a bag. And I already put Andrew on it because I have, for a history teacher, I can remember dates all day long, but I have a hard time remembering from in here out there when I do the shipping. I do some shipping in here. I have a Rolo printer here. I have a Rolo printer out there. I've got all the stuff I need to ship in here. But for now, I've just been doing all the shipping out there because my wife helps me. Blue Ridge Mama comes out there and helps me. And she didn't like to help me in here. It's too crowded. So, anyway, thank you, Andrew. We appreciate it. And we are going to head back out to the Commonwealth Cabin for a couple of homeschool hustler store sales, or maybe just one. I think just one. But I'm going to say goodbye from in here. And thank you, as always, for joining us. Thanks for the kind words. Thanks for the gifts. Thanks for the purchases. We're overwhelmed by it all. We appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. All right, we have a homeschool hustler store sale. Turner, that thing. What is it? Do you know what that thing is? It's a mugwins? <laughs> it's a mugwai. A mugwai. Sort of. Not really. It's a, it's a gremlin. Yeah, a gremlin. That's right. And his name is Stripe. You know why they yeah. call him Stripe? No. Turn it around. Look at the back of him. Here, the stripe right here. Um, stripe down there. Yeah, they call them stripe. So I bought that at a garage sale, and I think if I have my story straight here, she wanted twenty bucks, and or maybe twenty five. And I knew I couldn't, I couldn't get it for that. I could, but I wasn't gonna make much money. So I offered her fifteen, and she hemmed and hawed for a second, and she said okay. So I bought that for fifteen dollars, and we sold it for forty dollars. So that's enough for you to spend a dollar, donate a dollar, and. Um, save a dollar. dollar do you know you say that out of order every time you say it at a different order every time yeah. <laughs> save a dollar spend a dollar and donate a dollar yeah. do you like that guy does he look cute no no you don't like that you know he's posable you know what posable means mm, like they can pose like do the yeah see how his legs move and stuff and it's from 1984 best year ever <laughs> all right now this was from a viewer so i'm gonna read this to you real quick okay mm -hmm. 
It is from Andrew, Comic Tattoos and Collectibles. That's the name of his eBay store. He says, hey, Commonwealth Picker and Hustlers, I saw this gremlin on one of your videos, and I had to have him be a perfect match to my 1980s toy collection. Been buying and reselling comics, toys, and collectibles since the late 90s. Even had my own shop for a while. That's awesome. Now I have a cush government job and do it for fun with my kids. Thanks for the videos and for the family example you're setting. That's awesome, Andrew. Thank you. You want to tell Andrew thank you? Thank you. We hope you enjoy it. Bye. Bye.